إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. And everything we newly invent into the, to this religion of ours is an innovation. Every single innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers in Islam, we continue to remind ourselves with the etiquettes and the rights that we as Muslims have over one another. That we have over one another and that we owe to one another. And we left off at a point with the etiquette that the Muslim should not ever double cross his Muslim brother. Nor should he belie him. Nor should he delay in repaying a debt that he owes him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُقُودِ Allah says what means, O believers, again this is a call out that should remind all of us that when we hear this, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا that if we want to be resurrected with the believers, that we should be all ears. O you who believe, O believers, fulfill your obligations. The obligations you make, the pacts you make, the contracts you make, this is not something minor, where you sign it thinking that you can deceive the person later, while, while Allah Azza wa Jal sees and hears and knows everything. And Allah, He describes the muttaqun, He describes the pious ones, saying, And Allah says, describing those who are pious, that from their characteristics are they who fulfill their covenants when they make it. So they don't play games with it. They don't look for ways out. They don't sign something thinking that they will be treacherous or betray this trust that they are engaging in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسُكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنَ التَّقَى Allah, He reminded us in the Qur'an when He said, do not ascribe taqwa to yourself, or piety to yourself, or piousness to yourself, or righteousness to yourself. Indeed, Allah knows best who fears Him and keeps His duty to Him. Allah is well aware and all knowing of the one truly who has taqwa. So be mindful of this in your obligations and your covenants and your pacts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا And fulfill, Allah says, what means fulfill every covenant you make. If you agree to it, if you sign to it, Allah is a witness and your angels recording your deeds are witnesses to it. Fulfill every covenant. Verily, every covenant you make, you will be questioned about. Allah will question you with respect to them. وَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَرْبَعٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ كَانَ مُنَافِقًا خَالِسًا وَمَنْ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خَصْلَةٌ مِنْهُنَّ كَانَ فِيهِ خَصْلَةٌ مِنَ النِّفَاقِ حَتَّى يَدَعَهَا إِذَا أَتُمْنَ خَانْ وَإِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرْ وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرْ رواه بخاري ومسلم. And our Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, there are four characteristics. If somebody possesses all of them, they are a complete and pure hypocrite. 
And if they have one of these characteristics, or they don't have all of them, they have one or two or three, then they have some aspects of nifaq, of hypocrisy in their heart, until they get rid of those aspects. And he told us them very clearly, these four that give you an aspect or complete nifaq, complete hypocrisy, if you fulfill them all, they are when you make a pact, you are treacherous to it, meaning you betray it. You make the pact, okay, ya akhi, I'll do this for you. Okay, I'll give you this for this amount. And you don't fulfill that. And mind you, every one of you has to know that this is a daily occurrence now amongst the family members, amongst the brothers and sisters in Islam. And it is from the aspects of nifaq. So where is our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is our fear that Allah knows all and sees all and hears all and will question us with respect to all of these? So when he makes a pact, he is treacherous, he betrays it. When he speaks, he lies, lying. Even that white lie, even that, tell the person who just called me on the phone, tell them, your son or your daughter answers the phone, tell them I'm not here when you're standing right in front of them. This is a lie. There's a way to say it without lying. He's busy right now, he's occupied, he can't speak right now. But when you tell them to lie, every lie, this is nifaq. This is hypocrisy in your heart. And until you get rid of it, you will have characteristics of a hypocrite. When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks his promise. And this is so easy to do, especially if you're engaged in business, or you're engaged with other people that you will say, I promise you this, when it's really not that, you're just trying to make a sale. Or you're trying to get someone to agree with you, or whatever it may be. And the last one, if he has it, he has an aspect of nifaq, that when he disputes, when he argues, he goes beyond what is proper behavior. This is nifaq. That when you argue, you get angry. You start to curse. You start to insult. You get red. You get so upset that you lose mind of who your Lord is. This person that when they argue, they go beyond their proper behavior. So my brothers in Islam, from the etiquette of the Muslim is that we rid all of this nifaq from our hearts. All of this hypocrisy from our hearts. And we fulfill our obligations on our pacts, even if it's something that we promise to do, that we find to be harmful for us, but not against the deen, then we have to fulfill it. <clears throat> and Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, Matlul Ghani Ghulm. Our Prophet وسلم, in this, he also mentioned that delaying repayment to a brother who has loaned you, to anybody who has loaned you. Because this is a punishment in the grave on the day of resurrection, uh, throughout the, till the day of resurrection, for the one who delays repayment of a loan. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and it's in Bukhari and Muslim, delaying repayment by one who has a means is zulm. It is wrongdoing. It's oppressive. It is injustice. How would you like to meet Allah with this characteristic of being unjust or oppressive or wrongdoing? Because you didn't repay the debt. Now this debt doesn't mean يعني, you don't have the money, you cannot get the money, you're working, you're trying, whatever you have to do. This is the one who says, يعني, you loaned it to them. And they have the means to pay you back. But the money you gave them, they keep reworking it. They keep buying other things that are not necessary. Fear Allah with respect to your debts, my brothers in Islam. Because they are a source of punishment in the grave. So this was, the ghani is not the rich one. It is the one who has the means to pay it forward. So if you take a loan, or you take a debt upon yourself, you should pay it back right away. Many of the brothers, like I said, they take those, don those loans, those debts, and they keep furthering it and say, okay, when this is successful, then I'll take it and I'll buy, oh no, I'm successful in this, let me go buy some more, then I'll be able to pay my loan back again. And it becomes a mess. And you delay repaying a loan that you are capable of doing. So fear Allah with respect to these matters, my brothers in Islam. Next we come to an etiquette to a point, a right that we have over one another, that the Muslim must treat his fellow Muslim brother or sister in a good way, and should do good things for them, and keep harm away from them. When you meet them, you should smile. So many times to the disbeliever, and although we should smile with them as well, and show the kindness and the good character, we have the biggest of smiles. Then a brother comes by, or a sister comes, and you frown. As if you, you have so much anger towards seeing that person. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ This hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنه That the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said كُلُّ مَعْرُوفٍ صَدَقَ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ أَن تَلْقَ أَخَاكَ بِوَجْهٍ تَلْقَ وَأَن تُفْرِغَ مِنْ دا 
This hadith which is authentic in the sunnah, uh, sunnah of At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, every good deed you do is a charity. Indeed, amongst the good deeds that you can do is to meet your brother with a smiling face and to pour what's left in your water or your bowl into theirs for them to, to take some share in it. This is from the ways that the brothers should be towards one another. To meet each other in a good way. To want good things for them, to do good things for them, to give gifts to them or whatever it may be. Al-mu'min lil-mu'min kal-bunyan yashuddu ba'dahu ba'da. Our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the authentic hadith in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi, the believer to the believer is like a building, strengthening one part of the other. Ikhwani fillah, where is the love for one another? Where is the mahabba? Where is the compassion? Where is the assistance? Where is the dire, the direness in your hearts to help someone who is in need from amongst this ummah, your brethren or your sister, your brothers or your sisters in Islam? Accept the good things from your brother. Forgive their evil. Forgive them, overlook them, pardon them for their, for their ills that they may have done towards you. We are so stringent. If we want Allah to be merciful with us, shouldn't we be merciful to others? If you want Allah to forgive you, shouldn't you forgive others? This act of holding grudges towards one another is contrary to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Nor should you bear his brother with more than he's capable. And you should not seek knowledge from someone who is ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, خُذُ الْعَفْ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفْ وَأَعْرِدْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said what means show forgiveness. Forgive one another. Don't hold a grudge. It's not worth it. This will delay your entry into Jannah if you're both going to go there. You'll be waiting outside till you make up and get over it. Why wait till that time? Why delay entry into Jannah if that's our destination? Show forgiveness. Enjoin what is good and turn away from those who are foolish. Don't engage them. Don't engage with them. Don't respond to foolishness with foolishness. Don't respond to evil with evil. Don't respond to argumentation with argumentation. All it does is it buries you in sin. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وقالق الناس بخلق حسن. In this hadith في المستدة الحاكم, he said, and it's authentic, fear Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fear Allah wherever you may be. Always have fear of Allah. In everything you do, even if nobody's around you and there's not a camera in sight. Fear Allah because He is well aware of everything. And follow up any evil you do with a good deed and behave with, so that it erases it. Follow up the evil and the sin you do. Catch yourself, make istighfar and go and do good deeds so that you erase the evil and behave towards the people with a good behavior. No doubt this is for everyone. But those most deserving of your good behavior is your family members. From your parents to your wives and your husbands to your children to your siblings, and also your brothers and sisters in Islam. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى The brothers, the believers, they are brothers and sisters to one another. So be mindful of this. Those most deserving of your good behavior, your good character, are your brothers and your sisters in Islam. May Allah forgive us for the sins we transgress and allow us to fulfill our rights. أَقُولُ خَالِي هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ إِذُعَ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ دَنُوبُكُمْ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers in Islam, how we have to live our lives in general towards the masses is one thing. And then the higher degree is how we're supposed to be with one another as brothers and sisters in, under Tawheed, under the one worshiping Allah alone without any partners. So we must fulfill our rights, and by this we have to remind ourselves of them, and that's the point of this series of khutb. And we have to know the etiquettes that we should have towards one another. We get to that a Muslim should show his fellow Muslim the required respect, especially to the elderly one, and compassion to the young one. The Muslims, again, although this should be towards all, the Muslims over the Muslims, we have rights to a higher degree. Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, Laysa minna man lam yarham sagirana wa yuwaqir kabirana. This hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet وسلم, he said, The one who does not show compassion 
ease with the young ones, and mercy to the elderly ones, and respect to the elderly ones, then this person is not from us. They are not from among us. Listen to this. The one who is not compassionate and kind with the young ones, and does not show respect to the elderly ones, this person is not from among us. This should, ring a big, should sound a big alarm off, that you, by disrespecting the elderly, and not showing compassion to the young, could be away or aside from this ummah on the day of resurrection. Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, Min ikhlalillahi ikramu dhil shaybati al-Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, he said in the hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, verily part of glorifying Allah, part of you glorifying Allah is showing respect to the gray haired Muslims, to the elderly Muslims. Part of glorifying Allah is that you respect them and honor them. This doesn't mean praise them. This doesn't mean do what they say if it goes against Allah's command. This doesn't mean kissing their feet. This means that you just respect them and you help them and you aid them and you make dua for them and the likes of these matters. And look with respect to the youth, with the children, the young ones. Allah's Messenger وسلم, was the best of examples. So many of us, we see a kid around and it's like we're annoyed. Or you pay attention to them as if they're, yani you don't pay attention to them as if they're nothing or they don't exist. Or they're unimportant. Why? Because they may not be in a lofty position to praise your status or who you may be. But the young ones, the Prophet ﷺ dealt with on many occasions. He would invoke dua for them and make dua for them. Not just his own children, for the ones he would see. He would put them on his lap. Sometimes they would urinate on him. They would go to the bathroom on him. Many of us, sometimes our own children do this and we get mad as if this isn't what a child does. How is this compassion and kindness and ease and mercy for the youth, for the young ones? They used to go to the bathroom or urinate on the Prophet ﷺ when they were in his lap. When he would go on a journey and come back, they would surround him from in front of him and behind him. He would lift them up. He would command the Sahaba, lift up the children. Play with them. Engage with them. Deal with them with their age level. This is part of what's owed to you. So don't think the rights of the Muslim is just to the other brother who's your age or older than you. But from the etiquettes of the Muslim is showing respect to the elderly one and mercy and compassion to the young child. And we will finalize on this reminder from the etiquettes of the Muslim towards the Muslim is that he must treat his brother in a just manner. Give him his full rights that he deserves by being his brother or her, his sister in Islam and deal with him in a way that he would like to be dealt with. We remind each other of the hadith all the time. نَقَلَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدَكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبُّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ That the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, none of you completely believes until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Your brother or sister in Islam, what you love for yourself. We can say this, brother, I love for you what I love for myself. I love for you better than I love for myself. Well, guess what? Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. And Allah, huwa aqrabu ilaykum min habl al-wareed. He's closer to you than your own jugular vein that's in your neck. Not physically. We know Allah is above the seven heavens, above His arsh, above His throne, separate from His creation. But His knowledge is so close that He knows every time your jugular contracts to push the blood forth. You can't fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until you love for your brother and sister in Islam what you love for yourself, you don't completely believe. And if you want to fool yourself or fool that brother or sister, go ahead and do so. You're only hurting your say, yourself, your situation on the day of resurrection. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يَسْتَكْمُلُ الْعَبْدِ الْإِيمَانِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ فِيهِ ثَلَاثٌ ثَلَاثُ خَالِسًا الْإِنْفَاقُ مِنَ الْإِقْتَارِ وَالْإِنْصَافُ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ وَبَذْلُ السَّلَامِ رواه البخاري The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, a slave does not complete faith. They don't have complete faith, complete iman, until he possesses three characteristics. Giving when they're in a state of poverty. Yes, even when times are tough, it is a proof of your iman. As-sadaqatu burhan, your char- charity is a proof. When you give, it's a proof of your iman. When you give in a state of poverty, giving full rights to others, 
When you fulfill the rights that others deserve over you, and look at all these weeks we're discussing just the rights we have over one another, because we say La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku, lahu al-hamdu, huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, wa nashhad anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Wa ashhad, when we say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, when you say the shahada, you can never use the noon, the, 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 uh, the one that groups it. You always have to say it as an individual, inshaAllah. So a slave does not complete faith until they possess giving while in a state of poverty, fulfilling the rights to others and giving them their rights and spreading the salam, spreading the greetings. So my dear brothers in Islam, again, we've gone through rights over one another that we have as Muslims. May Allah allow us to fulfill them and etiquettes that we should have and how we should treat not just all people, but especially our brothers and sisters in faith. May Allah make us of those who fulfill them. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka anta sami'un qareeb al mujib al da'wat ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in